This is the JP News, now in 4K. Tonight's features, his and hers backyard brawl, Freedom Park in Scotia, open mic at Savoy, frozen pizza test, Niska Day Parade, and Brotherly Battle. What a good thing to have to have under control. Under control. Wow, yeah. Awesome. This is Tom L. at the St. Anthony's uh, Italian Fest of 2019. What are your thoughts on this festival, Tom L.? Well, it's a beautiful day, and there's lots of good food, and beautiful women walking around. Oh, yeah, we love that, yeah. So it's one year from last year when we came to this Italian festa that I remember from my youth as being one of the most fun nights in Schenectady, especially as a preteen, especially as a young teen. Romance was in the air, excitement, Ferris wheels, lights, vendors, games, a lot of excitement. So we're here again. And uh, I'm not going to say I told you so, but last year I said this festival would be dying. I think it's probably insurance rules um, connected to Union College. Yeah. Don't you think they should bring back the uh, rides and the Ferris wheel? I miss that, yeah, because I've been coming here many years since my, my sons were young when they had the ride. Yeah. But I guess there was some uh, difficulty years ago. A kid got hurt, 
an insurance problem with the college or something, I don't know. They gave me a, um, a Papa Mole, would that be so hard? I mean, would that raise the premiums that yeah. much? Give me a Papa Mole, one Ferris wheel, some lights, because uh, um, this is not going to be a thing anymore. Perfect, perfect intro. It's a blonde with it's it's, it's a blonde with some puppies. I hit, I hit the I hit the jackpot. Crimey, <laughs> crimey, crimey. Hi, buddies. Like, you like taking movies of buttholes, Jess? Well, not buttholes. <laughs> oh. Not your backside, boys. Homer, Loki, Homer, there. hey, Homer, Loki. Is that a normal sky or what? Or no? No, no it's not. Does that look like a... No, it, well, it looks like a bunch of jets went through it. And yet they didn't. You, you know they that. didn't. Okay. I know. I know. As the photographer is leaning, about ready to fall down the bank and into the water. He's afraid of the fish. Oh, look at Loki's afraid of the fish. Oh, it's a big fish, people. So here we are on uh, Lark Street, is it? No. I'm eating. All right. <laughs> yeah. What? It's better than filming you peeing. Oh okay. God, Madison Ave. Oh, we're on Madison Ave, and we're about to go to a Savoy. comedy night open mic at what establishment? The Savoy Tap Room. And here's where we are going into Savoy. Talk about um, dating websites, because that's always a good one for me, because I get sick of sending emails to bumps on a log with ladies that I don't even don't even freedom. answer me. I could manage a profile for you and probably do much better. I know. Than you do your Whenever own. one of my friends says a, sends a message to a girl, I get responses. When I send something, I get like I get nagged at. <laughs> Like, I wish I knew what the flavor of the pizza was, except for hot. Like, not hot, like, but, like, hot, like, temperature. Like, that was, you know, what Richard Simmons said? 
my older brother comes along, Martin, and he looks at me and he says, Stephen, you're a queer. And I said, no, Martin, I'm not a queer. I'm a doctor and I'm just taking Linwood's temperature. He said, no, you're a queer. And he decided to put me on trial for being homosexual. And he gathered up all the children in the neighborhood. And he was the prosecutor. We had a judge and a jury. And then he got Howard Christian to be my defense attorney. And that was a really good choice because Howard happened to think that a tallywhacker made a very good thermometer. <laughs> it won't surprise you to find out that Howard turned out to be homosexual as well. And the ironic part about the whole thing is that my, my brother, my older brother, was also homosexual. And so that was my poor father. He had two queens and my younger brother who was retarded. So two queens and a moron. No children that he could be proud of. So, poor man, I feel sorry for him. He's just a nice South Georgia redneck and he just didn't have any children that he liked at all. And anyway, one day I'm on the backyard playing with my neighbor Mike and, and Mike and I get in a fight. You know, well, I, we didn't get to fight. Mike got in a fight with me. I was just running. I wanted to get away from him. And my father sees all this going on. And I'm running up to get in the house. And my father's like, no, boy, you're going to sit around. you got to fight that boy. And I was like, I don't fight. I don't want to get hurt, you know. And he says, no, you got to fight. And he says, and I turn around. And about the time I turn around, there's a garden rake sitting right there by the porch. And so I grab the garden rake, and I hit Mike over the head with it, knock him out. You know, cut his head wide open. And that was the end of the fight. I figured my daddy'd be proud. But he wasn't. He was pissed off. And 20 stitches later, you know, that poor kid was, was surviving. Anyway, I was sent over to his house to apologize. So the next day I went over there and I said, Mike, I'm really sorry for hitting you over the head with a rake. And um, he said, that's all right. And I, he said, you want to see my stitches? I said, yeah. So I went over and I touched his head. And I said, damn, Mike, it looks like you got a fever. And I said, <laughs> and I said, you want me to take your temperature? <laughs> he said, well, yeah, take my temperature. So I took Mike's temperature, and then he took my temperature, and the next thing you know, we were best friends. <laughs> and when I got home, my daddy was talking to my mom, and he was saying, you know, that boy of ours is a bit of a sissy, and we think we need to send him off to, I think we need to send him over to the Boy Scouts to get him straightened out. Now, I didn't have any problem at all being a scout. But I was a little bit more inclined to be a Girl Scout than a Boy Scout, and I didn't have any part of the Boy Scouts. And so my mom said I didn't have to do that. But you know, a few weeks later, I'm at school, and this young man comes in after, after, uh, on, on a Monday afternoon, and at recess, he's telling us all about Boy Scout camp. He'd been at Boy Scout camp that weekend. And he's telling us about they're out in the woods, tying everything up with ropes, and they're camping, and they're fishing, and they're cooking over a fire. I didn't want any part of that. And then he says, and then after dinner, we started jerking each other off. And we were sucking each other's dicks. And I thought, well, now, scouting is starting to sound a lot more appealing to me. So I decided, I got home that day, and I said, Daddy, you remember you wanted me to join the Boy Scouts? He said, yeah. I said, well, they got a meeting tonight over at the Methodist Church. Why don't we go? That dumb son of a bitch was about as proud as he could be. And by 6 o'clock that night, I was a Boy Scout. And sure enough, a few weeks later, we went off to Boy Scout camp. And there we were, and we did. We were learning how to tie knots with ropes, and we were out in the woods, running around, and building fires, and fishing, and camping, and all that stuff. And sure enough, after dinner, we were jerking each other off and sucking each other's cocks. And then I taught them all a little trick. I said, "Have y'all ever taken anybody's temperature?" And so I taught them all. I let every one of those boys take my temperature. And I was the most popular Boy Scout from that point on. And I am very grateful to this day to the Boy Scouts. You know, because they taught me how to tie all those ropes. And I was wondering why they like to turn, tie up all those, you know, use all those ropes and tie all those knots. And here it is, 50 years later, and it's amazing to me just how many boys want me to tie them up before I put my towel whacker up their buttholes. Anyway, that's all my time. Thank you very much. All right, my therapist tells me I need to talk about my life, so i got to take a different approach and just talk about how horrible my life is. You know, um... Uh, like I said, I'm almost 38. I know I look like I'm 50, but like nothing good has ever happened to me ever since I was 19, because that was the day that my life changed. I was, I was flown to, I think I can see it from here, that place right across the street, Albany Medical Center. Yeah. I've never been on a helicopter, but I guess they flown, flew me there when I was a young kid. I know, it's all right, it's all right. Yay, way to go, hooray, I, you know, I have nothing, like really, I have nothing, I'm just sitting up here, 
I, my brain was gonna freeze, and I didn't even. Which have... one's first? Which one's first? Yay! It's turning. The, look the, at look at him go. He's he's running. Who wouldn't he's running, run yeah. from that kind of open mic performance? Would be standard. As I well. had to laugh at the comedian that was talking about drive-through haircuts because I'm a barber. I know that's what I thought was funny. I know. I was like, I was I, like I, you're I a barber. That's I, funny. I could have cut him up really bad with that one. I could have ratted my comeback. I mean, you have no idea how much better I am talking one-on-one -on -one to a person. Uh, it's Everybody it's is. a whole it's a whole new deal that people don't you know, getting that is a whole fucking new stage of you know stuff. Which I remember telling all my friends I wanted to be a comedian when I was in sixth or seventh grade, and that my kind of ultimate thing. goal is to be on Saturday Night Live. I want to be a fucking player. I I like acting. I like, uh, but I I want to be like in train wreck roles. Like Amy Schumer. What, the heck? what we've been doing, kind of, but I want to be, I want to be like Leonardo DiCaprio. I want to get fucked up. Who doesn't want to be like Leonardo DiCaprio? He is like my He's favorite He's the fucking actor. man, dude. Yeah, yeah. Up to date. Yeah, no, I... I Madison he, Pizza, baby. He pulls up, it's not even about him being a... He's not really that... You know, he's, he's not quite as good looking as me, but he's he he, he just pulls it off. Well, he is because he's younger than me. A little bit. Not much. I never felt he was good looking. Okay. Uh, Store-bought frozen pizza is what I'm talking about in this segment. On the left, we have the Paul Newman pizza. On the right, we have the classical, classical pizza. They are both plain cheese pizza. I pizzas. I have chosen to add mushrooms to them, so I am going to decide which one I think tastes better. Now, in the oven, still warming up, baking, baking, uh, is the Price Chopper. Um, pepperoni pizza. So I'm gonna try and see which one tastes best. Okay, this is the Classico pizza. Hmm. It's not bad. It tastes a little garlicky. Um, mm. the second bite tasted better than the first bite. So, now, I'm gonna try, now we're going to try a piece of the Paul Newman pizza and see which one we like better. Okay, now we are going to try the Paul Newman pizza. Hmm. Well, they're both good. So far, I think I like the Paul Newman pizza better. We have to try the Hannaford brand pizza next. It's got pepperonis on it, so it may not be comparable since you've got two mushroom pizzas and, and one pepperoni pizza. But this is the Paul Newman pizza. I think it's light, slightly better than the classical. Okay, now we're going to grab a slice of the Hannaford brand pepperoni pizza. We're going to find one that's got lots of pepperonis on it. Here we go. Mmm. Well, this one tastes um, good as well, but uh, I think the Paul Newman pizza was the best out of all of them. For a very cheap frozen pizza that was only about three dollars, this is really good. You know, if you're, uh, well, if you have a lot of kids, and 
people around these parts sometimes do have a lot of kids. That just sort of happens with people. Uh, and, you know, a, uh, a man could come home or a woman could come home and, uh, you know, with uh, five or six of these pizzas and pretty much everybody would be able to go to bed without being hungry. Maybe they'd have a little heartburn. But that's what we got uh, Tums for, and you can buy them cheaper in the generic brand. So this has been a pizza comparison segment for JP News. Um, but this is, this is really good. They're all good. But I think the, the Paul Newman pizza was the best. Pretty good here. Okay, here comes the Niskiuna Day uh, Parade. I hope we're getting some focus here. Oh, there's one. Go oh, here we go. Some cartwheels and acrobatics. Okay, here's politician James Tedisco. He is part of the Niski Day Parade. Uh, he, he's waving. There he is.
<laughs> okay. Here, Loki, Loki, out right here. All right, that's enough, guys. And one more for you. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, please get it off my shirt. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right.